Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today we are at Dinosaur National Monument and we're actually on the Utah side. Now this park spans from Utah all the way into Colorado and there are two very distinct visitor centers. Now the one on the Colorado side is only open seasonally and offers more of the beautiful vistas. However, the one in Utah has something amazing that we're going to be exploring. Decided to pull off at this little site right here and we're going to be taking this trail to find some petroglyphs. Now, I know the vast majority of people come to Dinosaur National Monument to see the dinosaurs. However, before we get to the dinosaurs, let's talk about the people who used to live here. The Fremont people lived here approximately a thousand years ago, and they left behind their markings in some of these amazing mountains that we've been seeing at camp yesterday, which if you didn't see that, go check that out. But then also here at this little shelter. So this is really cool because we not only get to see the dinosaurs in a minute, but also so stuff like this, which is so, so neat. It tells us a little bit more about the Fremont right here and says that they actually were a farming culture and they grew corn, beans, and squash. Now, there are some different markings on the cliffs over here that we're about to see. And I wanted to draw your attention to this right here. It says here that in order for these to be preserved, we cannot touch them. The oils that are actually in our hands, they can break down the petroglyphs. And it says here also, we're not supposed to trace or rub. And even though it would be super cool to take home like a rubbing of one of these, that would also hurt this. So we're not going to do that. And I did want to add one more thing that is not on the sign. You're not supposed to actually add your own artwork to the walls. I did see someone decided to take it upon themselves to etch in their name. And that's not something we're supposed to do at these sites. It's supposed to be about the history of the people who are here, not the people who are visiting. This isn't the place for that, guys. Right here on the edge, it looks like this could be an animal, maybe a horse. I'm not sure, sometimes you see horns. This one doesn't have horns. Now up near the crack there and a little bit more faint, we do have a couple that have horns. And so this is something that's a little bit more common. I don't know if this is a deer or an antelope or like a big horn sheep. Each site seems to differ just a little bit on what kind of animals would have been there. So for the similarities in the pictographs, I'm not sure if it was just a different kind of animal that lived here at the time or if this was just a common descriptor. Now I will say this, the people themselves are depicted slightly different than I've seen at other sites. For example, when I was in Nevada, the people were almost more like a stick figure. These have a full body to them. And then also there's a lot of attention to the hands on some of them. They have these big outstretched hands on the larger ones. So I don't know what the difference is personally because I don't have a background in this, but this is so neat to see because you can kind of get a comparison from from the other sites and notice that even though they were communicating, they were communicating in their own unique way, which is so cool. See like this guy right here has fingers, distinct fingers. And then there's another faint one beside him who also has distinct fingers. And then the bodies themselves are very different. They actually have more of a thickness to them. And then their head is on a neck. It's almost as though they have a bulbous head. And that's in comparison to these that are up here, which have almost a triangular body with a somewhat triangle-like head. And less detail in the fingers, except for with this guy over here and this one up here. And then even more faint, if you can see this one that's like right here, he looks as though he is wearing clothes. So he has lines across him as opposed to the solid, which was over here with these. Now, if you happen to be watching my channel and you have any background in petroglyphs, please leave me a comment as to where I should be researching the differences between the different kinds of bodies. I think that's so cool. But um, anyway, enough of that. Let's get back to dimples and on to the dinosaurs. 
this. I just wanted to make sure we stopped here because this is so cool. But um, we have some other cool things to do today too. And cool seems to be the word of the day. Sorry guys, um, I'm just really excited. Okay, we have made it to the visitor center and now it is time for us to go in and explore. But first, I wanna draw your attention to this Stegosaurus right here. Now, if you'll recall, whenever we went to Texas, we actually went to a park, a state park, that had two really big dinosaurs kind of in the middle of it. And the reason why they had those is because that's where some of the footprints for those dinosaurs were actually found. Well, here we have a very cool Stegosaurus for similar reasons. Did you know that Dinosaur National Monument actually is a site for them finding Stegosaurus? Isn't that cool? But even more so, this guy right here, much like those in Texas, was actually on display at one of the world's fairs. Not the same one, but still, at one of the world's fairs. So this is really cool because this Stegosaurus is even a relic, a different kind of relic. As always guys, I definitely suggest watching this video because it was really, really good. Now in this particular video, they actually filled in the history of the people that we had seen with the pictographs and actually said that their history dates back over 12,000 years, which is super cool. And this is one of the largest collections of human life kind of documented through the findings. So you have pictographs, you actually can find granaries, they have ancient tools that were used, and then they also tell the story of how settlers came to the area about 150 years ago and how things changed from there. So definitely watch the video. It's about more than just the dinosaurs, but it'll help you to kind of get a better understanding as to why this place is awesome. Look at this guys, some of the different findings that they had. Now, if you and I were to see this right here, we might just think it's some scratchy rock. However, this is actually pieces of fossils that were from the seafloor. And then right here, you can actually see a little lizard's footprint. And I kind of see it like right here toward the front there. This is more traditionally what we're used to seeing at a site like this is something that might have teeth. This is actually an Allosaurus jaw that actually has teeth fragments still in place. Now, if you did watch my campground video, you'll notice there are some beautiful tall trees. Those were cottonwoods. It says here that they were actually a welcome site for the pioneers that were coming to the area also because they could find water based on where these trees were located. And along this display, we can see some of the other things that they might have been able to find and that we can find today. Bighorn sheep and river otters, of course. It would have been super cool to have seen one of these yesterday, but we didn't. But also some of the different vegetation. And this breaks down the park into sections. So we can actually go from side to side. And it tells us a little bit more about each part of the park. Okay guys, we're gonna touch this piece of rock down here. It says that it is 1.2 billion years old. Oh wow, that is one old rock. And right next to that, we see all of the different layers of rock that have come since then. Look at this. We brought in our passport. After riding the shuttle up a little bit to an exclusive area, you come to this big, huge quarry site and it's all protected and indoors. And it's really, really neat. Now this all started out with eight vertebras, eight. They found intact 
eight brontosaurus vertebras and realized that this was a site where there were tons and tons of fossils and bones to be found. And at some point they decided that they wanted to preserve the site so that we could come here today and see kind of what it is to see them in their state. And that's really, really neat. So we're about to go up this ramp right here and into something that we have never seen before, an active dinosaur quarry. As we come in, there's actually this little reference map so you can see kind of what is where. And looking in, there are so many cool things here. So I definitely encourage you to check this out. Now the real question is, why are there so many fossils here? And this is the explanation. It says here that where we are standing today was actually an ancient river. So right here, right where this amazing wall is, was once an ancient river. Now it goes on to say that that ancient river actually some animals would naturally die and then others through drought would die and eventually get washed down to like a collection and that's what makes so many of them appear in this particular place. So that's pretty cool because otherwise that would be a big question. Why aren't there dinosaurs in all of these places around us right now? And it just goes on and on and on all the way over there and up at the top up here that's where that original find was made in that region over there now they do have a little book which we might pick up also to explain a little bit more of each one of these bones and what they might have gone to okay we picked up a guide to the fossil bones at the quarry and this was just a dollar you can put a dollar into the donation box and then we have tons of additional information so, for example, now we can see what kind of dinosaurs were here at the quarry. And let's look through a few more things. Now this book is also pretty cool because it tells you the general information that you might want to know on how to use the guide and then also what are the paleontologists and where are they. And then as we kind of go through, you can find each one of the bones is actually documented here and you can go over and find the number of the bone and it'll tell you what it is from and what piece they believe it to be. So we can literally find every single accounted for bone on this quarry face and it shows you where they're located. So you're not just looking at a vague puzzle piece looking to find where it is. You can actually say, oh, it's in this quadrant right here. Let's go find it and then this is what it is. So what that means to me is I can take pictures of the entire quarry wall and then whenever I get home, I can actually look in this book and still know what I'm looking at, which is very, very helpful. So I think that that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take some still shots and then see what we can find later whenever we're looking more into this. Now, as we continue down this section right here, which is kind of in the middle, it actually tells us the story of the history. And I thought that this was pretty neat on this original sign. It says that the first bones were actually discovered in 1909 on August 17th and it wasn't even a few days later that there were already visitors coming out here to see this spectacular sight because at that time this wasn't a common occurrence to find dinosaurs and they didn't have near as many references as we do today. I mean can you imagine this was excavating back in the day. They used mules to pull up big huge chunks of bone. That's insane. Now here we have a little map of the quarry itself. The historic quarry where they found the dinosaurs initially was actually pretty shallow. And then they started to kind of go down a little bit on both the sides, almost like a U. Between the 1950s and the 1990s, this modern quarry was actually started to be discovered. And then afterwards, this is what they call the digital quarry. The digital quarry is bones reunited and eventually five thousand fossils from historic and modern quarries along with the photos and documents will be on place here. 
Now sadly, the man who made the first discovery would never know the true potential of this site. And he only knew it to be the initial dig site, which was much smaller, much more primitive. I think he'd be pretty proud of what we have today because they definitely wanted to preserve all of those different pieces for the future, which was his original intention. And now, clearly, we are being able to see them and his work is accomplished. Now, some of the bones that have been found here have gone to different places. The Carnegie Museum in Pittsburgh, the Denver Museum in Denver, another to Pittsburgh. Here's the Nebraska State Museum. Then we have the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. In fact, bones from this quarry have actually gone to over 20 different museums across the country and then also in Canada. So that is pretty cool that one site can contribute so much knowledge to so many across the country. There is actually a video here that doesn't have audio that shows the excavation and then the preparation of some of the fossils that were brought out. And it's pretty neat because this is the title of it right here. You can actually find this probably on YouTube as well. And it's from the Carnegie Museum of Natural History. Going back to Earl Douglas right here, a statement that he made to the Smithsonian. I hope that the government for the benefit of science and the people will uncover a large area, leave the bones and skeletons in relief and house them in it. It would make one of the most astounding and instructive sites imaginable. And as we see it today, Douglas's dream did come true. And we can see the process of where we started out and where we are today. Now thus far, they have found approximately 400 different kinds of dinosaurs. 1,500 different bones are still embedded in this wall right here. And that is a lot, but I think that that just goes to show that this is one of the most unique and important sites that you can visit if you're interested in learning the past of the dinosaurs because this is the most complete collection ever. Up in this region is where the official first tail pieces were found, the little vertebras. And as you can see, there are several that are just stacked on top of one another up in this section. Looking down into the secondary level, you can see the different layers of rocks that have been chipped away. And in more modern days, they have used more power tools to do this very carefully. But when they first started out, they had very primitive tools. As we browse through, it's kind of interesting to see the different sizes. So like the one that I'm focused on right here is very small. And then as we move upward, there's one that's much larger. And then there's one at the top that almost looks flat like an alligator's tail. Just when I thought it couldn't get any better, the downstairs is so cool. Look at this, bones, but not just bones. It has a display beside it to tell us who it belongs to, what size it was, and some other cool facts. So this guy right here is the Camarasaurus. It's a femur bone. So a femur bone would be the same as this bone for us. Now, just for reference. Okay, so femur is that big bone in your leg. This femur is bigger than me. Literally, it's as big as my entire self almost. That is crazy. Oh, you know, just 60 feet long and 25 tons. Okay, yeah, this guy was big. Yeah, this guy was really big. What is this one? Look at this. Look at this. Now this is cool because the little signs really do tell the story. It says here that the special feature of this particular find, 
back here was actually that the skeleton was nearly found entirely intact. Entirely intact. And even more crazy, the hearing bones were actually intact. That is wild. Now I can say this, this guy right here definitely looks vicious. Those are some talons to say the least. And of course we're looking at an Allosaurus and it says right here that this was one of the most complete meat-eating dinosaur skeletons that was ever found. And this is what it would have looked like when they were excavating it. I told you the talons were real though. Like, meat eaters have talons. Nice little plant eaters don't have those kind of feet. And they didn't have those sharp teeth like that. No, no, no. Now, another cool fact about the quarry itself. Now, after the original findings, this place that we're in right now did not exist. That was way back in the early 1900s. In fact, it wasn't until the 1960s that the first building of similar nature to this was actually made available. However, that one had some structural issues because of the way that it was constructed. So in 2011, they actually redid this building so that it would be more structurally sound so that they could preserve these fossils and bones for years and years to come. Do you know what this is? This is actually a juvenile turtle shell. And then what about this? Maybe this? Or perhaps this? This place is not only the home of some amazing, uh, amazing, amazing dinosaur bones but also the home of many other fossils and along this wall you can actually find some of the things that they found in this area from insects and plants to creatures from the water and then also things that might have lived on the ground it's really cool to come and actually look through each one of these because they have magnifying glasses and you can spot out and identify different little pieces it's pretty neat like this little lizard skull. This is actually something that they found in the Morrison Formation and they believe it to be an old lizard skull that dates back 149 million years. And this one is actually some kind of little crocodile. So maybe I wasn't too far off in assuming that that tail looked crocodile-like. In here we have some of the defensive dinosaurs. This would have been like a stegosaurus tail spike. And right here, there's a stegosaurus back plate. Um, yeah, crocodiles are definitely related to this somehow, somehow. And I think that's what's cool about coming to places like this. You get to see those similarities to things that we still have around that are not extinct. And it makes you go, hmm. Oh wow, where on earth are we going to get to touch real dinosaur bones? Only here, right here actually. I am so excited, I get to touch a dinosaur bone. <laughs> and the mask is not letting you see just how big I am actually smiling right now. Touching the bone. Oh, that's cool. Now we're almost finished here, but did you know that this guy, the Allosaurus right here, was actually one of the most common predators in this area at that time? Not the little T-Rex, no, no, this guy, this guy right here. And boy, did he get big. Just kind of a reference on how big this mouth actually is. I could put my entire torso inside of this, probably no problem. And just to kind of give us a reference as to how that they actually functioned, the front right here was their nose, and then they had the air that would go through these two little ducts, kind of, and then they had an eye. So if we go back over here and look at this, this in the front right here, that is the nose. 
and then the little dots would have been the air here here and then the eye would have been way back here you know, I think that every time I come to a dinosaur site, I obviously do a couple things. I think about the fact that I would be the very small fish in the pond against these guys. But I also play a familiar song in my head throughout the entirety of my visit. This right here is what it looks like, I believe, whenever they cast the finding. Isn't that neat looking? In contrast to all of these, which again, are real dinosaur bones. This is definitely a place you have to come. No doubt, it is amazing. If you've ever had an inkling to know anything about dinosaurs, you need to start here. It's a little baby stegosaurus. It's so small. This is probably the size of most people's German Shepherds. So large for a dog, small for a dinosaur, and this is the most complete skeleton that you will find of a young Stegosaurus. Now you're probably thinking, but that's not very much. Why aren't there the other parts? Why aren't there the spikes or any of the other pieces? And scientists don't know. They don't know if baby stegosauruses that were only a few months or years old had those things or if they developed them over time. Those are things that they're still trying to find the answers to. And it's really hard because specimens like this are very rare to find. So this is such a treat to see today. Definitely, definitely the best the best for last. Now, definitely adventurers, if you have enjoyed coming with me today to the quarry, make sure that you leave a like, hit the subscribe, and check out all of my future uploads because we have some really awesome things coming. I have thoroughly enjoyed sharing this with you, and uh, I hope that we can find more awesome places like this along the way so that we can uh, learn a little bit more while we're out here having fun. Till next time, guys. Bye!